Good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar on the GE and Impossible Missions University Edition brought to you by Nine Sigma. My name is Casey Shapiro, and I will be your host and moderator for this webinar. Um, please note that this webinar is being recorded and will be transcribed for viewing at, on the contest website at a later date. So now we're briefly going to go through the agenda. <clears throat> First, we're going to provide the speaker introductions, then we'll go ahead and give an overview of the challenge. After that, we'll present the frequently asked questions of the challenge and then work through a live audience Q&A. To participate in that live Q&A, please submit your questions at any time through the Q&A chat box. We'll collect and present these questions during that Q&A um, portion. <clears throat> if we do not answer your question live, note that um, Anything that we get through will be transcribed um, within that transcription that we mentioned earlier and then presented on the forum um, for viewing at a later date. Finally, we'll wrap up with information on what you can do today for the contest, including where to register, how to stay connected, and how to submit your proposal. So now I'm pleased to welcome the following speakers to our webinar this morning. From GE, we have Vanita Manny. Technical Leaders, GE Corporate Global Research, and Lisa Ralph, Innovation Leader, GE Global Operations. And then from Nine Sigma, we have Paul Masili, Senior Program Manager. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Vanita to give us an overview of the challenge. Uh, so hello, everyone. Um, so I'm uh, Vanita Mani, and I'm the Technology Leader at Global Research. And at GE, we have uh, multiple businesses, as you guys are aware. We work on everything from turbines for power to aircraft engines to lighting to um, CT machines. So at GE Global Research, we are the R&D arm for GE, and we work with all our businesses. Uh, at Global Research, we have you know, the world's best scientists of virtually every discipline that you can think of. And we are located in different parts of the world. And uh, like I said, we get together working in teams, multidisciplinary teams, working with our business partners to invent what's coming out next. So what's the next CT scanner, for example? What's, uh, what's the next thing in aviation? And uh, our proudest moments are when our inventions, you know, go into our products and in, in the hands of our customers. So um, last year, you know, when um, GE Marketing contacted us and said, hey, we have this unimpossible challenge that we'd love for you to uh, work on, we were definitely intrigued. Um, it was um, a fun way to not only showcase, you know, what we do every day, but also it was a challenge that we needed to make happen in a short period of time. And like I said, you know, some of our proudest moments are when we see our inventions see the light of day. Here was a chance for us to, you know, get some things together and, and get it out there. So uh, I'll give you the, uh, the three unimpossible missions that we worked on. The first one was Snowball's Chance in Hell, where um, the idiom is that a snowball cannot survive hell. So what uh, what the challenge was is, hey, we take a snowball, uh, put it into a really hot environment, so 1,200 degrees C, and um, design something where the snowball can go into this environment and get it out, and it survives. Uh, so you know, obviously, we had multiple concepts that we uh, we we drew out. We have uh, heat transfer experts who looked at some of the design concepts, figured out how long a snowball can last, you know, with various design concepts. We had uh, structural experts who designed, who said, you know, at that temperature, how long would some of our cabling last, which which we're going to use to, um, you know, put into this hot smelting, um, you know, vat and uh, get the snowball out. And uh, we also had materials people who design high temperature materials uh, for a living, you know, working on aircraft engines or, uh, or gas turbines. So um, we got this team together, drew out some concepts, made some prototypes. We had furnaces here at Global Research where we put in, you know, our contraption here just to make sure that it'll last uh, at the temperatures that we needed to and for the duration we needed to because it's not a question of just putting it in and getting it out in two seconds. There is all the filming time to take care of. So one, one thing I do want to mention is, you know, in all these idioms, 
while the production value was fantastic, you know, it made our researchers who are extremely smart also look good. Uh, but the other part of it was there were no camera tricks. We uh, these things actually had to work. All right, so that was the snowball's chance in hell. The second um, one we took on was lightning in a bottle. Can you capture energy uh, in a bottle? And uh, not only did we want to do that, you know, cap make uh, a large energy storage device which capture you know millions of volts of uh, uh, of uh, of a lightning strike, but we also wanted to use that energy and demonstrate we actually did it by starting a car. So. Um, there, you know, the technologies we brought together was, of course, electrical design, dielectric engineering, and um, and a little bit of, um, of, you know, just getting all of that together um, in terms of what's the size of car that you have, how much energy does it need to start the car, and going from there. Um, finally, the third one was talking to a brick wall where um, the challenge was, you know, somebody's going to be talking on one side, you have to actually go across um, a six inch brick wall and so have the voice transmit. And it's not, it's going to be an outdoor public location, so therefore you need to be able to um, account for you know variable noise around there uh, you need to be able to clean the signal and um, so there you know we had some of our vibration experts um, uh, and you know getting together accelerometer technology along with you know understanding noise and vibration and figuring out how to clean up the signal so you get a good solid signal on the other side so um, I, I, you know just uh, in conclusion we worked on you know three broad idioms snowballs chance and hell lightning in a bottle, capturing lightning in a bottle, and talking to a brick wall. And uh, we got teams together with various disciplines from mechanical engineers to electrical engineers uh, to uh, dielectrics guys and design guys. Uh, got them together. We had all the facilities we needed to test our concepts here at Global Research and then work with the production guys to actually make it a, a, a nice quality film, which I, I'll tell you, you know, as scientists, we uh, we um, we had a lot of fun doing it, um, and um, and you know seeing some of our work profiled, and uh, uh, in in a way that that makes us proud uh, to do what we do every day. Perfect. Thank you so much, Vanita. So um, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and pass it off to Lisa to give us a little bit about um, what the, the challenge is for the students globally. Yeah. Thanks so much, Casey. And good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. This is Lisa Ralph. Um, so, so thrilled that all of us are joining, um, joining us here today. And Vanita, thank you for that amazing recap. I know this is personally one of the most exciting campaigns that I have ever worked on in my, uh, in my years here at GE. And it, if any of you have not checked them out yet, go home or go uh, get online, get on your mobile as soon as you're done with this call and check out those videos. They're all on YouTube. Super, super fun, really uh, really gets you excited about the, the cool things that GE technology can do and um, creative ways we can use technology to solve problems, whether they're big or whether they're, um, re whether they're small. And what we're asking here in this challenge is really for students, for all of you guys to do the same, to think about what's a unique idiom, whether it's a snowball's chance in hell or like talking to a wall. Tell us how you can imagine using some GE technology or technologies to solve for that. So we understand you don't have access to the technology, but it's all about how do we um, think creatively. So leverage your brilliant minds, leverage these great things you've seen across the globe, really cool novel ideas, and propose an idea about how you can leverage GE technologies to solve or debunk that idiom. Perfect, thank you so much, Lisa. So now we are going to go through some more specifics, such as the timeline, submission criteria, evaluation criteria, and then give a rundown of the prizes for this challenge. Uh, Paul from Nine Sigma is going to start us off by providing the information on the timeline and submission criteria. 
Hello, everyone. Uh, so we've been running this challenge since uh, since about mid-April, and we've got a bunch of really great uh, responses in already, which is great to see. Uh, but we're going to be keeping the submission period open through June 14th at 5 p.m. Uh, Eastern Daylight Time. So make sure that before then you've either submitted your first response, uh, submitted uh, your second, third, or fourth ideas, or gone back to edit your first response if you'd like to change it. And then we're expecting to, to make the announcement of uh, who has won the contest sometime in August of this year. So you might be wondering, uh, what does a successful submission look like? So each submission should have uh, an idiom. Uh, you should uh, be able to use any idiom that you'd like, even if it's not in English. Uh, feel free to use an idiom in your native language if you'd like, but please do provide an English translation of that idiom if it doesn't happen to be in English. Um, and then also uh, some information about the GE technology or technologies, you're free to use multiple, that you'd like to use to debunk your idiom. Uh, to help with this section, uh, GE's provided a technology toolkit that's available on our website that you can go to and look at to see descriptions of some of GE's technologies they think might be useful for uh, debunking some idioms. And then uh, we'd also like to see a description of your proposed approach to disprove the claim. Uh, so how would you use the GE technology to disprove the idiom? Uh, sort of in the same sort of uh, example set forth by the videos and that Vanita explained to us, uh, you know, how would you use some uh, cutting edge technology to disprove an idiom that uh, seems like it might be impossible? And then finally, uh, to round out the submission, we'd like to hear a little bit about you. So what makes you unique? Uh, why do you think that you'd be a good candidate to uh, use GE's technology to disprove your idiom and be an intern at GE potentially? Uh, so one of the most popular questions that we've had thus far is what makes a good idiom? Uh, so ideally, it should describe something that's uh, difficult, unlikely, or impossible. So a good example is something like Vanita explained, is catching lightning in a bottle. So that seems like something that would be incredibly hard or impossible to do uh, and would make a good example of an idiom that you might be able to disprove with technology. Uh, a bad example would be a piece of cake since uh, people make pieces of cake all the time. You can't really disprove that. It doesn't really make a claim. So uh, it does really help if your idiom makes a claim because that claim can be disproved with an experiment. So like in the example of Snowball's chance in hell, it makes the claim that a snowball would have no chance in hell or a really hot environment, which, we, which the GE team disproved by immersing one uh, in a molten metal and it didn't melt. Uh, a bad example would be at the drop of a hat. It can't really be disproved. It doesn't really make a claim. Great. Thank you, Paul. So now we're going to go ahead and turn back to Lisa and get some more information about the evaluation criteria and then the prizes available for this for this challenge. So Lisa? Perfect. Thank you, Casey. So evaluation criteria. First thing to note here again is the fact that we do understand it is extremely likely and we hope that you do not have access to these GE technologies. So it is all about how do you imagine they would work um, or proposal for how you again imagine it works. So what's your idea? So things that you're, um, you'll be evaluated on once you submit your, uh, your entry will be first off the feasibility of the proposed approach. So again, understand that you're imagining this, but our panelists of judges are going to take that imagined, uh, imagined approach and say, hey, is this something that can actually work? What's exciting here is the fact that we actually want to film or have your idea in one of the next Unimpossible Mission video series. So that's why that feasibility of approach is here, because we're actually hoping to make it happen. After that, a second thing is the use of a GE technology or technologies. So because this would be a part of the Unimpossible Mission series, we need you to use a GE technology. We have provided the technology to 
Toolkit, which is available on the website, so you can go in there, see a sampling of some of the technologies that you um, could possibly use. Don't feel that is all that's available. If there's something else you're aware of that you think that would be a great fit for your proposed approach, feel free to use that instead. There's no um, kind of preference given to which technology you're using as long as it's a GE technology. After that, there is the uh, creativity of the proposed approach. As Vanita um, alluded to, we love being able to solve some really tough challenges. And the Unimpossible missions as a whole were a great way to use novel creative approaches to leverage our technologies to solve those challenges. So we're looking for the same thing here. So be creative in the way that you're thinking of debunking your idiom. After that, I know we've um, asked to submit a little bit about you. I think we'll walk through a little more about that in terms of um, eligibility. But do note for the grand prize, which is the up to $100,000 scholarship, there are a couple additional criteria we'll be looking through. That's going to be one in academic focus in a technical discipline. So think. Um, as this is GE, it's the unimpossible mission saying, cool technologies, look at the cool things we can do. Uh, we're hoping that that student who is our grand prize winner will be someone who's focused in a technical discipline. So that can be, it's broad, but can be software, digital, sciences, technologies, engineering, math, etc. After that, one additional thing, it is a scholarship, so looking for a demonstration of satisfactory academic work. And then I believe on the next page, uh, as I mentioned, there are some really amazing prizes. Uh, this is actually some of the best I have seen from our uh, challenges that we run. So the first off and probably the, probably the big wig there is our grand prize winner. So this is an up to $100,000 scholarship. Note this is going to be paid directly to your university, can be used for tuition or on-campus room and board. So this is not going direct to you. There is no cash equivalent. It will go directly to your university. Um, there are some additional details about the, uh, the grand prize scholarship. We have expanded it so it includes both college or undergraduate students as well as graduate students. I, as someone who's paying off graduate student loans, understands they're large, so pretty, uh, pretty exciting here. There's also our 10-week paid internship at a GE Global Research Center. Um, Vanita mentioned there's a variety of these across the globe, so we will work to place you at one uh, pretty regional or local to your home country. This will be, again, 10 weeks. It's paid. Do note here, you sh should be able to take this internship, which will be in 2017, at a time where you're not overlapping with any other internship or co-op. So you'll need 10 weeks for you to um, focus specifically on this internship. And then the third item there is a trip to the New York GRC, so you can wave hello to Vanita in the hallway, where you're actually going to have your idea filmed in the next Unimpossible Mission series. So this is cool. Not only are you getting a scholarship um, and amazing internship, but you're also going to be a movie star, or at least a video series star. So if, again, if you haven't seen any of those videos online, go check those out. As they, We've got that little image on the uh, right-hand side that could literally be you starring in a video about how you're solving your idiom. Uh, second place, as I mentioned, is two of those internships, so still um, amazing, amazing opportunity to be working on all these brilliant minds. So very, very exciting set of prizes. 
Great, thank you so much, Lisa. So now we're going to go ahead and work into the um, challenge FAQs. These are questions that have been fielded from inquiries into the Nine Sigma Provider Help Desk and the Challenge Forum. Um, we have been receiving a number of questions around um, elig eligibility on the forum. Um, so we do have a slide going over all of that um, specific information that Lisa can go through before we get into all of those individual questions. So Lisa? Great. Thanks again, Casey. So eligibility. We are trying to be absolutely as inclusive as possible. Um, you may have seen on the website we actually expanded the, uh, the scholarship. So it's, again, available for both college students as well as graduate students, which is great. So general walkthrough of eligibility. You need to be age 18 or older or the age of majority in your country country of residence. So say if you're 16, you just got your driver's license, unfortunately um, you won't be eligible, but if you are age of 18 or majority, you're good to go. Kind of go to the next stage. Next question would be, are you a current college student or graduate? This means you cannot be in high school right now and going to, uh, going to attend college in the fall. Um, you cannot have graduated from college four years ago and you know a really great person who is a college student, you need to be a current, um, currently enrolled college or graduate student. If you are doing that, you, um, the next question is, will you have graduated before December 2017? So the reason for that is this internship is going to take place in December of 2017. So if you, uh, if you will not, you are eligible to participate. If you are graduating beforehand, this is where this extension comes into play. So if you will be continuing your studies into an advanced technical field, so if you're going into a graduate degree in an advanced technical field, again, that could be software, um, math, engineering, sciences, we gave a, a very broad list of those, you are eligible again. So hopefully these are these are pretty simple. Um, again, we're trying to be as inclusive as possible. Pretty much think, are you a student? Yes, then you are most likely eligible to enter. A couple other things you'll notice in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen regarding the internships. Um, do note, if you win the grand prize for the scholarship, there is going to be that kind of um, satisfactory display of academic work that will come into play if you're to receive a grand prize. As for the internships, do note each internship needs to be completed by December 31st. 2017, that means it needs to be completed, that 10-week internship, by the end of next year. As I mentioned before, it can't overlap with any other internship or co-op. Uh, we want you fully dedicated to this very exciting experience, so you're going to need a 10-week gap somewhere in the 52 weeks of 2017 to a lot to this. And then also note that any winners are going to have to complete any pre-employment screenings or other applications. You will become an intern, so there are some general forms and so, so forth that you'll need to include. So there's a variety of information. I know I ran through this very quickly, but if you do have any questions, feel free to reference the competition rules. Um, they're noted here on the pages. It's also, there's a link on the very top of the competition website that you can view. And if you're still confused, we are very diligent with monitoring our challenge forum. So feel free to submit any questions you may have there. Great, thank you so much, Lisa. So we're going to go ahead and get into some um, some specific frequently asked questions on the next slide. But before that, I just want to go ahead and encourage everybody to submit their individual um, questions that you have that you might have um, had during the entire webinar in through the Q and A chat box. This is a nice period where you can sort of start to get those um, into us, so that as soon as we're done with this um, challenge FAQ, we can start answering them. So. Um, Let's go ahead and move down to the challenge FAQs and keep submitting your questions. We are starting to get a number of them in right now. Thank you. Great. So we're going to go ahead and uh, ask some of the frequently asked questions to the GE team before we start taking uh, your live questions uh, here on air. So 
Uh, is it possible to submit videos, YouTube files, uh, or other uh, videos or attachments with your uh, proposal? And is it is it recommended that you do so? I would say absolutely. So again, feel free if it's easy, you don't need to do any of these. They are optional, but we would love if you do. This is all about filming a video series, um, being kind of technically advanced and creative. So if you do have the option to say, share a video, share any files, etc., we would love to see them, even if it's filming yourself on your iPhone. Um, feel free to share those and all of the fields that you'll need are available on the website to be able to submit any of those videos or files. Great. Thanks, Lisa. So I'm going to combine the next two bullet points since they're kind of getting to the, the same outcome. So uh, you have to have a, a you know technology or idea that's sort of fully fleshed out that has IP around it, that has, you know, might be closer to a product or is just an idea okay. Great, great question and great point of clarification would be um, in this competition, in this challenge, we do know we're asking you to use GE technologies. We know we have the IP for those. So what we're looking for from you are just general ideas. How are you imagining that you could use GE technologies and how would you propose applying those to debunk those problems? So we're not looking for a product. You don't need to, so actually do not <laughs> submit your technology that's in some level of patenting or anything like that. It's a non-confidential proposal with your idea of how you're imagining to apply a GE technology. Great. Thanks, Lisa. And then the next question is about the award structure, but in addition to just the award structure, sort of how that applies to the ideas submitted. So uh, are these awards, do you think they'll be given out to the, the top three ideas, the best idioms, the best experiments? Or can you sort of detail how those decisions will be made? Yeah, great question. So a uh, quick recap. Again, our prize structure looks like there are two second place winners who are each going to receive a super, super cool, as in I wish I had this opportunity when I was in school, uh, paid internships at any of the global GRCs, which are global research centers. So really great opportunity, really great network resume builder. In addition to that, there's also going to be one grand prize winner. So they will receive the uh, this competition scholarship as well as an internship, as well as you'll be flown in to our New York GE Global Research Center to have your idea filmed as one of these Unimpossible Mission series. So in terms of how is my idea going to bubble to the top, again, it's not based on idioms, so feel free to use whatever idiom that really suits your fancy. It does not need to be an idiom in English if it's something in another language. If you could submit your uh, kind of the translation of that just so we get a sense of what you're solving for, that would be great, but does not um, is not dependent on what that idiom is. We're really looking for what's the uh, feasibility of your proposed imagined pro approach as well as what's the creativity around it. So how is this something cool and exciting? Does it seem like it should be or could be part of that Unimpossible Mission series? Great, thanks. And then the last frequently asked question is, uh, will people who respond get a detailed review of their proposal if they're not selected? We would love to, but unfortunately, um, not everyone who submits an idea, actually no one who submits an idea other than the winners will receive a detailed proposal. We always want to be as fair as possible and provide everyone the same experience so you will not be receiving a detailed review after you submit your um, entry. 
Perfect. Thank you both, Lisa and Paul. So now we're going to go ahead and move into that live Q&A that we mentioned. Um, please continue to submit your questions through the Q&A chat box. We've already received a number of questions that we're going to go ahead and start uh, fielding in just a few minutes. Um, we're going to go ahead and take the rest of the time to answer these questions live. Again, if we don't get, your, get to your question live, don't worry. We are transcribing this um, webinar and we will be going going ahead and putting that transcription up on the challenge forum where you can read the answers to the questions. They will be submitted into GE for additional answers if they aren't answered live. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started with, with some of the um, live questions that we have. So um, Paul's going to go ahead and start asking them from our side here. Great. So the, the first one is a question about uh, where you have to be located. So must you be in the U.S. in order to respond, or are international students allowed to apply? Great question. This is Lisa again. And you absolutely do not need to be um, from the U.S. You can be anywhere across the globe. This is a global challenge, and we look forward to any submissions from across the world. We think you've got brilliant ideas, and they come from everywhere. So very excited to see your global creative responses. Great. Thank you for that. Uh, so another question about the types of technologies that are able to be used in a submission. So do you have to use just GE technologies? Or are you free to combine GE technologies with some other technologies or ideas that you have? Good question. So feel free, if you'd like, and Vanita, feel free to jump in here as well. Um, you do need to use at least one GE technology, but feel free to include others that may support the, uh, the approach of, um, of your proposal. Great, thanks. Uh, we just switched the slide back to the eligibility slide so that people could uh, view that since we're getting a couple of questions about general eligibility as well. Uh, so we're, we're sort of collating those to see w w if there's a, a general theme. But uh, in the meantime, uh, here's another question about uh, responses. So uh, can you participate as a team uh, or must you submit as an individual? Good question. Great questions. Again, this one, we thought about offering it as teams. We've actually decided that this needs to be an individual submission. The rationale behind that is that any of the prizes, so internships, are provided, um, provided as an individual. So if we were to have opened this up to a team, only one person on the team would have been able to receive an internship. We didn't figure that was fair, so submissions do need to be individuals. That said, if you want to kind of spitball some ideas with your roommate or your classmates, feel free to do so. You don't need to keep your um, idea completely secret. Great, thanks. Uh, Looking through here, uh, so uh, if if a proposal doesn't get selected, uh, there's a question about uh, will, will you get a notification that you're not selected? So I can take that one. Yeah, we'll be sure to to let you know that you get notified that winners have been selected. So uh, you'll know that that there's been an outcome and that your proposal has been reviewed. So we'll make sure that everybody gets communications about that. Um, and then there's a question, again, from uh, the, the international standpoint. So, so Lisa, uh, you gave the example about uh, GPAs on a four-point scale, but uh, if you're international and your university uses a grade point scale that's different, perhaps a one to ten scale, uh, how, how should you complete the, the uh, form uh, in that case? Um, Great question, and this is always, I know we've provided a couple samples here. Um, they did happen to be from the U.S., but we do note this is a global challenge, um, and it's, it's very nuanced because of that. So if you are from a global um, location, which is amazing, 
feel free to just submit whatever your kind of GPA or whatever that numerical marker is that would identify kind of how's your progress or academic work going. We provided the 3.0 on a four point scale as an example, but it's more so a demonstration of satisfactory work per the uh, scenario or per the scale that's leveraged locally. So we are trying to be as uh, relevant as possible for those local regions. So feel free to provide whatever those marks are. And do note, as, a, um, as part of that submission form you'll be filling out, it will ask for your university. So we should be able to pair um, any of those marks with the local region. As well as one additional, one additional note would be on the prizes. Not sure if this came up, but we will be um, offering global internships. So we'll be matching you with different um, different GRCs across the globe. Great, thanks. So uh, here's a question about videos. So since the grand prize, uh, it sort of one of the aspects of the prize is the potential to be in the next Unimpossible series of videos. Uh, might it be a good idea for a submitter to sort of mock up what their video might look like with a short video of their own, sort of explaining what their experiment like might look like on film? That not necessary, but that would be amazing um, if you do. Again, we're looking for what are well thought out, robust ideas. Again, ideas, but we're looking towards how is this feasible as well as how is your idea creative. So if you feel that a video is a great way to showcase how that idea works, feel free to do so. We are super, Super excited and very much look forward to seeing any videos you have, although again, that is optional. Great, thanks Lisa. Uh, I can take the next one, I'll ask it to myself. So uh, if you have uh, multiple <laughs> ideas, uh, should you submit them all in one response or in separate uh, responses? So the answer to that is, uh, if it's a, a different idea, a different idiom, a different experiment, uh, those should be in multiple responses. And each of those responses will sort of be judged on their own independent of, uh, you know, the fact that you submitted others. So if you have multiple ideas, feel free to use the form multiple times to submit all those great ideas. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, another one that I can take. So can you edit your submission as many times as you'd like before the deadline? Yes, absolutely. Uh, after you submit your uh, submission, uh, you'll get an email that provides a link back to that submission that allows you to go and edit it. Uh, just like uh, submitting the, the proposal for the first time, you'll have up until the project deadline to, to edit uh, your proposal or submission. Um, so Lisa, a couple questions about uh, GE technology. So uh, is there a resource available for people to learn about uh, what GE technologies might be good fits for solving impossible challenges? So there isn't a specific person. Again, we do want to be able to provide everyone the same level of kind of opportunity. So there, there are not any office hours or anything like that at the time being, but there is a GE technology toolkit that is available on the competition website. So you'll note there, it's got a few samples of cool technologies that we think don't feel that you have to use specifically those, but it gives a general description, a general flavor of what they are, as well as a, um, a couple links where you can go through and learn more. Also feel free, there are our um, GE Global Research Center has a, a variety of websites. So feel free to check that out, peruse around and learn more about um, a GE technologies. But again, we do realize anything that you'll be leveraging is publicly available information. So we're just looking for the general gist of do you understand how this is applied? Great, thank you. Uh, 
another question is sort of, again, referring to the uh, maturity level. So is it, is it expected that there's some sort of proof of concept or a prototype built, or is it more about sketching out uh, an interesting experiment or idea for uh, disproving something? Great question. So what we're looking for, we do not expect you to have proof of concept that could very likely be because you probably don't have any GE technologies immediately at your disposal. So it's all about how do you imagine this would work. Feel free to just sketch out, here's what I think, here's what I proposed to do and then what our judging or our judging panels will be looking at is based on that sketch do we think that's something that's feasible and then what's uh, what's super exciting and as Vanita described in the beginning of this conversation was the fact that they were literally spitballing ideas putting things on the page and then we're actually going through and testing them to see if they worked so don't feel free don't feel that you need a almost commercialized product by any means it's just an idea just a sketch great thanks and then related to that sort of can you give a little bit of an idea of what sort of detail should go into a response should it be uh, many pages long a couple paragraph description uh, some sketches sort of what level of detail uh, do you think a good response might have I personally, this is my personal opinion, but I would err on the side of as much as you have. So again, we understand you don't have access to it, but the more that you can share with us in terms of how do you actually plan to debunk it, the better. So the better we can understand, the better we can assess whether it's something that's feasible, and that's one of the key evaluation criteria. Do note that in the submission form, which is um, you'll see on the website, there is one question which is describe the approach that you would take to go about disproving the claim you've identified or that, that idiom that you've identified. So do make sure that this includes your rationale. Why do I think that my proposed approach is going to work? Uh, the process steps, so what is the actual process, how am I sketching this out, what are the steps I'm going to take to debunk this, so think through that. Three, how long do you think the experiment will take? Again, we know you're not actually running the experiment, so a guess is fine, but is it going to take a couple minutes? Is it going to take months? Give us a little bit of a time frame. Um, and then also think through, are there any challenges you foresee with doing that experiment? So is it that there's a super rare material that you're using and that might be difficult to get a hold of? Are there any safety requirements? So I'm sure Vanita spent a ton of time thinking through, we're shooting down a, a huge laser that's implicating a, a lightning strike into a jar, what do we need to think about to keep our, uh, our employees and our peers, our colleagues safe? That's really important. And then finally, um, what's the expected outcome? So what do you think to happen? And likely that's uh, <laughs> the opposite of whatever your idiom is. Great, thanks. Uh, that's a good segue to another question about idioms. So, what should you do if you just have a good idea for an interesting use of GE technology but don't really have an idiom to go along with it? Uh, do you still have a chance of winning? Um, feel free to submit it, but given our submission criteria are an idiom, or is an idiom, I apologize there, um, you do need to submit an idiom that you're solving for, so in order to be eligible to receive any of the competition prizes, you do need to uh, complete all of the submission criteria. Great, thanks. So uh, we've got a couple of questions about intellectual property that I'll sort of try and uh, summarize all together since they're all sort of getting to the same point. So uh, you, you could envision that, that some of the uh, ideas or proposals or experiment ideas could uh, either uh, result in sort of some interesting IP or uh, you know, have some IP related to it. So how will that be handled in terms of the competition uh, 
you know, the people submitting still have rights to, you know, any good ideas that, that come out of it intellectual property wise? Um, yes, so there's actually a few guys, if, uh, I'll do a recap, but if you want to read in more, to, more detail, uh, Section 9 in our competition rules is entrance intellectual property rights, so that's a, a great point of reference. But what we're saying there is that by submitting an entry to this competition, you're not granting GE, the sponsors, any rights to any non-GE proprietary technologies that you describe. And GE is not making any claim to ownership of your entry or any of that non-GE IP that it may contain. So the idea is that this is a non-confidential entry, as well as the fact that you, we as GE are not claiming rights to any kind of predisposed IP that may be there. You are not claiming IP to any um, IP of GE. That stated, do note that one of the grand prizes is that trip, which is to the New York uh, Global Research Center, where your idea will be filmed in a uh, unimpossible mission series, so there will be, um, I guess, a, a more fleshed out version of your idea that will appear in that video. And the idea is to share that video publicly with the world, which is pretty cool, but do note that there, there will be the visibility in the sense of the, the film. Great, thanks. So again, I'm just trying to uh, wrap up a couple of questions sort of into one general theme since we have so many great questions. But uh, Lisa, could you spend just a minute describing uh, the internships that people are competing for? Uh, will people be placed regionally or based on the technology type that their uh, background suggests they'd like to work on? Will they get a mentor? Can you just sort of describe what that internship, uh, both placement and procedure looks like? Yeah, absolutely. So as Vanita mentioned, the global research centers across the globe are probably some of the coolest, smartest people I have ever met at GE. So it is so exciting to have the opportunity to work with any of them. And what we'll be doing is we will be, once we understand or select our winners, we've left this purposely very broad to allow the most opportunity to place you in the most optimal um, optimal setting with the optimal internship. From our standpoint, we do want to keep talent, so you, as regional as possible. So we're not going to be, most likely, not going to be porting you across the globe to somewhere else. So there are, I, I believe, about 11 GRCs that are around the world. So it will be fairly regional. We will be providing you a salary during that time. We will be providing you room and board. We will be moving you there as well. So it is a, um, a pretty great package. And then what we'll do is work with you once again, once you've been selected as a winner to understand where's the best placement and what's the best type. So we've, we've purposely left it pretty broad on our end to make sure you get the most valuable experience as possible with the, with the right people and the right background. Great, thanks Lisa. Uh, so another couple of questions sort of around uh, what, what a good response looks like. So, uh, you know, the, we, we laid out the uh, judging criteria, but in context of that, uh, you know, is the creativity of the experiment most important? Uh, is it important that sort of the, the problem or impossible mission being solved relates to some sort of uh, broader global issue? Are those sorts of things uh, also being considered uh, in the selection process? Yes, so I would say first off, uh, the biggest things again are what's the feasibility of the approach. That is because it's something we actually to do. We want to film you and our GE teams solving this unimpossible mission. So that's the, that's the key point there. And however you go about solving that um, creativity approach, 
um, we would hate to we would hate to bottle in or <laughs> enclose the creativity segment of that. So it could be in terms of what's a unique idiom. It could be in the way that you're going about solving it. It could be in the way that you're presenting the idea. Um, it's really about what what's a cool what's a cool imaginative way to solve that idiom, and then. Um, I'm totally blanking on what you just mentioned, but I believe it was, do you need to be solving a uh, kind of a, a big global world problem? Really, really amazing. Um, amazing if you do, but don't be, or, or don't be hindered by that. So for instance, a snowball's chance in hell wasn't necessarily solving any great world issues, but it was a cool, unique use of GE technologies to say, let's take a novel approach to solve things. And that's really implying how can we use novel technologies to solve difficult problems. So while it doesn't necessarily need to be a uh, kind of the biggest, most game-changing use of technology here, um, it is great if you do. Great. Thanks, Lisa. Yeah, no, that was great. Uh, you got to both points, uh, so thank you. Uh, and with that, it looks like we've gotten to uh, just about all of the questions, or at least uh, the intents of all the questions. So we're going to go ahead and uh, start wrapping up the webinar with some information about what you can do today. It's great. So thank you both, Paul and Lisa, for helping us get through all of those questions. Um, I'm going to go ahead and reiterate one last time that if your question wasn't answered live, we are going to go through this with a fine tooth comb and make sure that everything um, that has been asked is answered. So everything is being transcribed and will be put on that challenge forum. Um, so for additional information, again, we're going to encourage you to visit this um, the challenge site, which is 9sig.co um, backslash unimpossible. Um, you can stay connected via the community forum and submit your proposal on that website. If you have questions, you can contact Nine Sigma um, at any time through our provider help desk, which is uh, via email, uh, phd at ninesigma.com, and via phone, 216-283-3908. Uh, Both of those are up on the slide right now. And once again, another um, reminder that the deadline for submissions is June 14th, 2016 at 5 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So um, with that, thank you everybody for your um, time and thank you Paul and Lisa and Vanita for your expertise and time with this. Um, we appreciate everybody and we look forward to getting your submissions. Thank you again and have a great day.